Well, hello again everyone. I've seen a lot of discussion recently on whether you should use things like oil-filled radiators and dehumidifiers in your van when it's stored on your drive over winter. Now this does seem to divide opinion quite a bit. Uh, on the positive side, there are a lot of people who think, well, you know, heat is good. It dries stuff out, keeps the dampness away, and uh, yeah, dehumidifier obviously removes water. Water is dampness, dampness isn't good, so it's, uh, it's obviously a good thing to do. There are also those on the negative side who don't think it's a good idea because heat does raise the capacity of the air to store moisture so they feel you might be attracting dampness into the van and there's also the argument that ventilation is is much better really than heating it's more important to ensure good ventilation and uh, these folks point out that uh, dealers and such don't do this they have uh, great ranks of motorhomes in their lots which are all sitting there perfectly happy unheated and without dehumidifiers running in them well i thought it was worth looking at this a little bit more scientifically now i have to point out i am not a trained or qualified scientist however i have spent much of my career working in the top scientific establishments in the cambridge area now it's true that my role has been mainly to put up shelves and unblock toilets but nevertheless I must have picked up something in the last few decades. Now some weeks ago I wrote a detailed proposal to the Royal Society requesting a substantial grant to enable us to travel the world in the motorhome visiting areas of different humidity and temperature to test out our theories. Now, despite using my best wax crayons and coloured paper, I haven't had a reply at all. So I have invested six pounds of my own money into some of the finest precision instrumentation that eBay can provide. I have this temperature and humidity meter. It's an analog one. You can get digital ones, but uh, I thought an analog one looked nicer. Now I'm also interested in the cost of running these things while your van is on the drive. So I bought myself this plug-in electricity cost monitoring meter. Now of course we are worried about dampness in the motorhome and apart from obvious leaks through the roof and things like that from rain and such, it's going to come from moisture that's in the air. And this glass here represents the motorhome with 100% humidity, which obviously is a situation we don't really want. If you heat the air in the motorhome, it is going to increase its capacity to hold water vapour. So this larger glass represents the motorhome with the air heated up inside it. And of course, it is bigger. Uh, the motorhome isn't going to get bigger when you heat it up. Well. It will marginally, I suppose, but the capacity of the air to hold water vapour is going to get a lot bigger. So if you then heat it up and have the same amount of moisture in the air, you can see we now have a bit of an air gap. This glass isn't substantially bigger than that one, but you can see we have got a little bit more capacity for extra water there. And we're back of course with the motorhome at 100% relative humidity at the sort of medium temperature. Now if that air then cools, we have reduced capacity for the moisture in the air. That, the Now, of course, the situation is a little bit more complicated than that. 
If we have our van with not quite 100% hit relative humidity, say about sort of 75, 60, 75% relative humidity, with sort of a, a reasonable temperature in the van, but it's very cold outside, then there's going to be a layer of air next to the outside wall of the motorhome that is much cooler and has a lot less capacity to hold moisture. So if you use this cream cracker to represent the wall of the van and uh, add our humidity in, then it uh, yeah, makes our cream cracker rather soggy and uh, unappealing. Hmm. Might be a little bit better with some cheese. Now dampness, of course, often brings with it mould and uh, we don't want mould in the van either. Now there are some tables available on the internet which show you the temperatures that mould will grow at given a certain air temperature and a certain humidity. So you take those and then that, that tells you the surface temperature, so your outside wall temperature, at which the mould will grow and that mould doesn't always need actual liquid water on the surface to grow. So that temperature will be slightly higher than the actual temperature that condensation forms. So you want to avoid that as well. So just to show you a sort of baseline, this is in my office in the house and the temperature is at 22 degrees. And the humidity is fairly high today, at about 62% relative humidity. Well, it's a pretty wet and damp day out here today. So I'm going to take the temperature and humidity readings in the outside air for a bit of a comparison. It's quite mild. I wouldn't say it was cold, but you can feel there is a very, very slight drizzle in the air. So uh, I think the humidity will be quite high. Anyway, got to leave that to settle for a bit to get a decent reading. Right, well that's had quite a while to settle. And you can see it's about 11 degrees out here and I'd say that's sort of 92 or 93% relative humidity. And uh, yeah, it is uh, now starting to rain quite a bit. So I brought the meter inside the van now and the van has been sitting uh, outside here by the garage. It's not connected up to the electric, there's no heater running, there's no dehumidifier running and it's been like that for a couple of weeks. So we'll see what the normal sort of no heating, no humidity storage conditions are like under these external weather conditions. No doubt it will fluctuate with the external humidity and temperature. But we'll leave this to settle and then see what it reads now. Right, well, I've left that meter to settle for some time in the van and I've come out to look at it and the results are a little bit disturbing. Now you can see we're sitting at around 10 degrees, but the relative humidity is off the scale. Um, so we're 100% relative humidity in here, which is far from ideal. Now, obviously this meter isn't calibrated and uh, even if it was, it would only be accurate within a certain range. This type of humidity meter, probably accurate from around 30% to about 80%. I think it did say something along those lines on the packet, but I've thrown the packet away now, so I can't refer back to it. If you want a full range um, accurate humidity meter, you need something like uh, a chilled mirror hygrometer. Um, used to have one at a place I worked before. They're about £4,000. So uh, if you want to buy one of those and check it out accurately, then that's the way to do it. So yeah, that's uh, far from ideal. And, uh, you know, the van is a, a relatively dry van, I think. I've not found any damp in the van so far. Uh, I've checked all the usual places. It could be, of course, that there is some damp in the van. It's 30 years old. Uh, I, maybe I just haven't found it yet. 
all the walls are pretty solid there's no soft spots or anything and the wall themselves you know they don't feel like they're wet there's no moisture on them there's no condensation forming and there's no condensation forming on the inside of the windows um that you can see there is outside so yeah it's uh a strange scenario anyway let's pull the van onto the front connect it up to the power and run our electric heater and our dehumidifier Let's have a look at the heater and dehumidifier that I have here in the van. Now I've got this little oil fired radiator and our neighbour Tracy actually very kindly uh, lent us this and uh, it's pretty good at uh, keeping a nice temperature in the van. Now I did see the Country Van Life TV episode about these little oil fired radiators. He's got a, a 500 watt one and if you check the rating plate on ours ours is also 500 watt now, i don't think it's necessary to crank it all the way up it's not that cold so i'm going to leave it on a sort of halfway setting it's it's set from uh, one to six and i'm going to leave it on three now from experience that should be more than enough in these conditions to warm up the main body of the van and certainly take the chill off now if you have it on three presumably it then doesn't use 500 watts continuously because it will come in and out on the thermostat. Have it cranked up to six, generally tend to find that the thermostat on it doesn't cut in and out. That's just six is just full pelt on all the time regardless. So I guess if you had a more powerful heater, so you had a, a one or two kilowatt heater, A, you might not be able to plug it in on a campsite. It might trip the electrics. So that wouldn't be a great move. But you could have that and turn it down and it might just do a sort of similar consumption. Not really sure how that balances out, but we've got the 500 watt heater, the same as Stephen from Country Van Life TV has. Now, we've also got this little dehumidifier. Now, this is an electric one. It plugs in to the mains electric and it's a Peltier effect dehumidifier. So. Uh, the Peltier effect is where you can use a sort of temperature difference across a, a unit to generate electricity. And this sort of reverses it. It puts electricity into the Peltier unit to generate a temperature difference. And then you have a heat sink on either side of the unit. And obviously the air blows over the cold side and uh, water condensates on it and drips down into this nice little drip tray. So it's not as efficient as a compressor dehumidifier would be, but I think it's probably a little bit more efficient than like a, a, a desiccant dehumidifier would be. And by that, I mean the sort of thing that you can buy in the shops, just a little container with something like silica gel beads in it and that sort of thing that just absorbs the moisture and uh, gets rid of it that way. You obviously can get big desiccant dehumidifiers that things like that have desiccant wheels in them which are industrial grade things and, and very powerful but obviously you can't run those in your motorhome i've seen uh, george and jane's video where they had uh, desiccant type dehumidifiers they went and checked them recently and they hadn't actually picked up any moisture in those dehumidifiers whether that indicates their van is very dry um, and and kept in good conditions or whether it's the weather at the time. I think it was quite cold when they went quite close to freezing. So maybe there wasn't much humidity in the air anyway. Or whether those units just weren't very good. Who knows? Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see for an update from George and Jane about that as time goes on. So anyway, my plan is to run these two units through this monitor monitoring my electricity use i've set this up so it's got a price of 16 pence a kilowatt hour 
You see, it's 0, 0 to 0 0.1 watts at the moment. Uh, no kilowatt hours because we haven't started yet. Uh, no cost. And there's our price of 16 pence a kilowatt hour. Just gone 12 noon. So I'm going to plug them in now, start everything going, and we'll see how the humidity and temperature changes. Um, maybe 12 noon tomorrow. Might pop in maybe later on tonight and just see how it's progressing. But we'll give it the full 12, well, 24, 24 hours to run. Yeah, straight away you can see we are um, 47, no, sorry, 473, four-ish watts. Um, no kilowatt hours yet. No cost yet either. Early days. Oh, it looks like 16 pence just came up on the cost. Um, anyway, we'll pop back later and uh, see how we're going. Well, it's now about three minutes past four. Might notice I've got some Christmas lights up in the van. Now they're running off a separate socket in the van, so they're not going to be adding to our electricity cost monitoring. But I've popped in, just have a look and see how the temperature and humidity is doing. Now the temperature hasn't really gone up that much. It's gone up to about 12 degrees, I suppose, uh, which is only a couple of degrees more than it was before, because see the humidity is coming down. It is still um, about 96% according to this gauge, but uh, the needle is not off the scale anymore. So we are having an effect. Well, it's now five past 10. I've popped out to the van again. I'm gonna turn off the uh, Christmas lights before we go to bed, but I'll just check and see what the temperature and humidity is doing now. You can see, although that temperature is still uh, staying around the sort of 11 12 degree mark the humidity is coming down steadily it's come down from well off the scale and it's now at about 85 percent relative humidity well it's about half past 10 the following morning now and we've only got about an hour and a half really i suppose of our 24 hour test left to run let's have a quick look at the meter yeah, we're sitting now at uh, about nine and a half degrees. So uh, our little 500 watt heater is not uh, maintaining the temperature in here. Of course, it's not turned right up. It is on a sort of setting that you might leave it just to keep the uh, edge off. And humidity is still going down. It's it's about, what was that, about 82% relative humidity. It's still quite damp, really. Uh, the weather conditions outside are about the same as they were yesterday morning. It's uh, pretty damp and wet and it's sort of drizzling with rain. I was wondering if the humidity was going down simply because it stopped raining outside last night and dried up a little bit. And obviously the van's pretty well ventilated so air should be exchanging all the time with outside. But it does seem as if that humidity is on a pretty steady downwards trajectory with the dehumidifier and oil filled radiator running okay well it's uh 12 o'clock now on the next day so our 24 hour period is pretty much up let's have a look and see where we've got to well in the last hour and a half the temperature has crept up to uh, 10.5 degrees uh you can see the heater is running at the moment but that thermostat has been cutting in and out so that heater has been reaching the temperature it's set to and the humidity has now got to well has it gone up slightly uh, reading that is about perhaps 83 percent so i guess that's going to fluctuate a little bit but uh, it's definitely an improvement on where it was at the start now you can see on our meter here, we're, we're still probably 490, well, 490 watts-ish. We have used 7.25 kilowatt hours, which is 116 pence. So one pound 16, we've basically spent 
heating and dehumidifying the van for 24 hours. Now, as you can see, our dehumidifier has collected some water. I don't know if it's worth measuring that to see how much water we have collected. Well, we're back in the house, got the old uh, measuring jug. So yeah, let's uh, see how much water that dehumidifier has pulled out of the air in the motorhome over that 24 hour period. Well, it's not much really, is it? It's uh, just, just on 50 mil really. 50 mil of water out of the atmosphere in the motorhome over 24 hours. And just looking around the motorhome, there is no um, condensation on the walls or the windows or indeed even on the roof or the roof light. So what can we conclude from all this? Well, the first thing is that I was really quite surprised how humid, how high the relative humidity was in the van after it had just been sitting with no heat or dehumidifier running for a couple of weeks. And I guess, you know, because the van is quite well ventilated, there are vents all over the place in the van, the inside air is going to be pretty much the same as the outside air. So if it's humid outside, it's going to be humid inside. Now, whether that's a problem or not, I guess, depends on a number of different things. I mean, we have no condensation, we have no damp that we've found, we have no mould. So the van isn't normally heated. I do run it round every sort of other week or so and maybe run the heater and dehumidifier for a couple of days. But generally it sits with no, no power to it and no heat running and doesn't seem to suffer. But having said that, having the heat running and the dehumidifier running does seem to do some good because it brought that humidity level down. So I don't think the folks who say it can actively do harm are necessarily correct. Uh, but then again, perhaps those who feel it's a necessity are also perhaps not necessarily correct. Uh, a lot, I think, will depend on the external conditions. Uh, there are a few other things we could do in the future. It would be interesting to just run the dehumidifier or just run the heater and see whether there's a difference in the performance of those. Obviously, we ran both together on this occasion. But for it to be comparable, you'd really need the exact same external conditions because we have got that good flow of ventilation. And really having the heat on should increase the ventilation because the warm air should rise up out of the top vents and be replaced by cold air brought in through the lower vents. So that may also be a factor. So it's difficult to draw any firm conclusions other than the fact that under this particular set of circumstances, running the heater and the dehumidifier did seem to have a positive benefit. And I think I will continue to do that. Every sort of now and again, whenever I can, I'll park the van on the front throughout the winter and try and run the heater and dehumidifier. And it's reassuring to know the cost isn't massive. Obviously £1.16 under these circumstances to run both units. So I guess over a seven day week, you're talking perhaps in the region of £8 to run those two things. Now, of course, that could add up over the winter if you just leave the whole van connected for, what, three, four months. So that would be... Uh, perhaps 12 weeks so you're yeah, perhaps talking uh you know 150 200 pounds worth of electricity over a winter if you if you just park your van on the drive and leave it 24 7 with an oil fired radiator and a dehumidifier running which perhaps isn't too bad uh if you are worried that your van is going to be susceptible to damp. 
obviously if you literally have a leak and water is getting in through a leak then uh, far more economical and effective to fix that leak anyway I hope you found that interesting uh, it, as I say it's difficult to draw any particular firm conclusions other than the fact that we don't appear to be doing any harm by running a heater and a dehumidifier well that's all for now if you enjoyed it press like subscribe if you want to see some more and ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new